What is up guys? We are back here with another round of street stock rookies here on Charlotte. Let's drop into our qualifying laps right now. Once again, I uh I realized that I forgot to put on my trading paints again. <laughs> so I have a really nice uh AMD Ryzen uh, that's actually the processor I use. I use a 3600X. I have a really nice car that has the AMD Ryzen logo on it. I keep forgetting to put it on. It looks really sweet. It's got like the Pontiac emblem on the front, like because these cars probably are supposed to be like a Camaro or like Pontiac Firebird. Um, looked really good, but uh, here we go, dropping in just to our uh, warm-up lap here, and coming to coming to get the green. Uh, not as much speed as I wanted, honestly. Down to like 134, 135. That's really not that good. Didn't really do myself a lot of help here. Setting up lap one here for the pole. Um, get down here to turn one. Let's see how we ran. Yeah, not not totally on the bottom there in the beginning. A little bit shaky. You can see the car. Car's now good, but see I came up from the bottom probably a little bit too early there. Once again, unfortunately, that's just not going to cut it. Um, not bad. It, I think this lap was still probably like top five material, but you know, for for my skill level, definitely not at the definitely not where I want to be. And that was just really sloppy getting into three right there. But uh, I think the next lap was a lot better. So coming to get the coming to get the white flag here for lap two, the last lap of qualifying. So that was a 36.884, guys. Remember the last time we ran a 36 like 8.18 or something like that. Um, in the last session we ran in qualifying, so that's like seven tenths off of what we ran last time we qualified here. That is, that's a lot of time, guys. That's almost a full second. Um, but a much better turn one and two right there. Coming into three, Let's see if we can snug that bottom. Yep, we get right down there on the bottom, come up a little bit, and I thought that was going to cost us the pull, and I think it wound up, I think it did wind up costing us the pull. I think we started this race P2 again. That was probably the one hiccup I had on that lap, honestly, right there. But yeah, see, down here, it, we can see it's P1 for a little bit, and then we wind up actually getting passed by Kent Vorez, I guess is how you say his name here on the results. Um, yeah, he actually goes up and passes us for the pole just by three uh, one-thousandths, and we actually beat the guy in third by, uh, look at that, one one-thousandth. But you know what, guys, with that, let's go ahead to the grid we'll see you there guys in the formation lap all right guys we can see the 16 i don't know what he was trying to do i don't know if he's trying to pass people on the formation lap gain a couple cheap positions of course that would get you black flagged but, uh, yeah, i don't know what was going through the 16's mind um on this pace lap here but uh getting ready here on the outside pole again um, not, definitely not the best place to start, especially on this track. Like I said last time, you really want to be on the bottom here in the street stock cars. It's really tough to start up here. You got to really, you got to really watch the leader on that rest on the uh, start of the race in the restart box. You got to really make sure you keep up with them to get yourself down to the bottom as soon as possible. Otherwise, you'll lose two, maybe even three spots right away. Um, but yeah, we were. Uh, so far, so good, and I think, I think honestly, I think if I remember correctly, this guy started driving at us. Right here, he like he got like really close to us. I don't think I looked over on the D-pad, but he was like, yeah, you could see him kind of right there. I don't know what he was doing right there, but uh, kind of interesting. Um, but as we uh, pace car should begin this time, and we are getting ready to roll here at Charlotte once again. Another 20 lapper here in the street stock cars. A lot of fun here at Charlotte. Pace car is away. Leader goes right away. Not the best start in the world. Clean shift up to three. Very clean shift up up to three. But then the so the leader right here. This was really interesting. Okay, because you always want to be on the bottom in these cars. And I don't know. He felt like we had such a run that he came up to block us. I mean, I had a major, major checkup right there, and I'm losing position by position. I don't know what this guy was thinking. He cost himself the lead. I, I have no clue. And, and, like, for a guy that ran a lap even faster than me, I mean, I'm Class D. I'm not even rookies. I mean, I'm sure he's probably in that range, so he has experience. I don't know what he was thinking, but, I mean, that guy literally on one lap just cost himself about five, six spots, like, from the pole. Uh, I'm not sure what he was thinking there at all, guys. Um, as we head into lap two, a little bit of a uh, do -si do here through the field. Everyone kind of uh, panning out here across the front stretch. A um, couple cars here not really holding the bottom too well. 
um, like I said earlier in the last video, really kind of loose. Like in this uh, change of uh, change of day, I feel like it. These cars really get slick when they get in the draft behind each other. They're really moving around. Um, kind of makes it, you know, more of a challenge with these street stock cars. Um, as we head into lap two and then uh, lap three, excuse me, here is uh, coming to get the uh, lap three from the start finish line. Um, just nothing going on really here too far. Kind of just checking up just so I don't hit the guys in front of me. Just trying to keep the draft, trying to keep ourselves relevant as we go under the five car here um, up to P4. And that's really all we were trying to do. So we were at like a 364 safety rating coming into this race. All we were trying to do was just stay clean. We really need to get to 4.0. We need to get that instant promotion here to get up to Class C. That's where we want to be for that Dega race for the Cup Series. And I'm actually gonna I'm gonna play these next few laps just from the uh, the TV cam. It got really crazy, guys. Honestly, really good racing through here. Really packed up here in the front pack. Really cool to be a part of this. Pretty clean, too, for the most part. Everybody holding their line. Um, that pink car back there, that was really a pain. That guy was a what they call a blinker. He has really bad connection. So that's why his car kept going in and out. I actually wound up getting behind him later in the race, and it was very, very annoying. But... Um, see almost a little bit of tap there from the two car behind us he was really closing in quick i'm glad he decided to check up there five car coming on the outside this made me really nervous and this is where i started to realize something was going to go wrong because this five car coming on the outside in the tri-oval never a good idea to try to fit two cars through there um not really a passing zone especially in these cars outside doesn't work um continuing here to just follow in line trying to stay hold my line and be as clean as i can this five Five really try to make it a mission to pass us on the top. I don't, he really loved trying to pull out there every time. And it was really annoying because it had me pinched down to the apron. And he's, I know he's not going to make up any ground, but he's going to be a nuisance for me trying to clear him on the, on the tri-oval every time, coming back to the tri-oval. So it was really just not making my life any, any easier than it had to be um, at all. It was more of a challenge. And th this, is where, this is where it really started to get dicey. This is actually... It, if this two car wasn't behind me, I would have completely backed out of line here because when people are trying to go three wide behind you like this, you know something's not going to work, especially with that, that pink car going all the way down to the apron here. And this is where all heck breaks loose. I don't know what the two was thinking right there. He tried to make it three wide between us. I actually got tagged, unfortunately, with like four, as that guy's flipping back there in turn three and four. Unfortunately, I got hit with four incident points there. And the two car was the guy who hit me. It, it's unbelievable, this game sometimes. And unfortunately, after the race, we were still stuck at 3.64 uh, safety rating. So didn't make any ground, didn't lose any ground either. I actually decided to let the one go there. Um, just because really, I, <laughs> at this point, I just did not trust any of these guys. Um, a lot a lot of hero racing early. It was just way too early for me to be going three wide here. I mean, come on, guys. Lap six of a 20 lap race and I know it's a short race but these cars stay so packed together if you're in the draft um, just not necessary guys no one needed to be able no one needed to be doing this this early in the race um, unfortunately for the guy who is flipping in turn three and four I mean it sucks because that two car caused that mess I get penalized for it and the two actually gets past me after after it's all said and done so really 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 bad there just the game kind of like penalizing the dirty racer and uh honestly penalizing the guy just being clean holding his line i mean that's what i was doing i was holding my line down low um really frustrating sometimes in this game and stuff like that happens but hey that's uh, that's that's racing rubbing is racing as they say um coming down here to lap nine you could see this one car this was driving me nuts this guy big time blinker he's got to fix his walmart connection man Man, at least go to Target or something, dude, and get your Ethernet cable. Oh, my goodness. It was awful being behind this guy. Um, pretty clean, though, after that. Everyone kind of just holding their ground up front. Um, it looks like everyone's checking up at least. The 16's still on the high side. That always makes me nervous when they go too wide here through the tri-oval. And like I said, wow, we did it. Not trying to boast there. We did a heck of a job, guys, getting past that. I mean, that's right in front of us, too wide, coming across. That is not a wide front stretch there, guys, coming to that tri at all. It's pretty narrow here in Charlotte. Uh, we were very lucky to dodge that. Now, the only bad thing is that really put us off the pace. 
three cars up there being in the draft the whole time obviously we're not going to run as fast of a lap but it was perfect timing because this this uh, blue car right in front of us actually just came out of the pit so we were able to later catch up to his slipstream start running some pretty good laps but three cars in the draft better than two so ultimately the leaders were still running the faster lap times um, and that's just that's just kind of the luck of the draw we can look at it like this you know it's still better than being caught up in that wreck um, as we just hit halfway here lap 11 now but once again like there's just no reason to be driving like that e even even at halfway like you know you want to you want to go too wide going in the travel you know three to go okay do it cleanly i've done it i've lost i've finished second here one time in a photo finish um but between that and like going three wide and turn three like that one guy tried on behind us i mean that it's really just it's it's head scratching moves by some of these guys uh, guys who just seem to think they can win the race on any said lap i mean lap 20 is when you win the race so um ultimately that's when you should really be making your aggressive moves like that no reason to be racing like that you're only going to endanger yourself and other people um especially a game like i racing you get you get penalized for not being safe and unfortunately <laughs> A lot of times what happens is the guys who didn't even cause the wreck get penalized for it. Um, I like myself here today. Um, but, yeah, that, that's just racing. Um, so we finally caught up to this guy's slipstream in front of us. This was nice. Uh, honestly, I think I passed him within the next lap or two. I think he let me go. He was nice. But, like, it was – yeah, okay, so I passed him right here. It was such a shame because I kind of wish he would have stayed in front of us for another two or three laps. We were, we were actually catching the leaders – by like a tenth and a half and I was running the relative on the screen um, and, and I could see that and, and when that guy let me go I kind of knew it was all over I mean unless these guys were, were to wreck in front of me realistically but um, but yeah so I mean now we're just kind of stuck riding around here just hanging out here in fourth just hoping for a wreck in front of us um, I mean, that's that's really going to be our best option of course it looks like we're in third because the pink car can't afford Wi-Fi. Um, it, that, that's really a mess, that guy up there. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how bad of a connection he's got, but I mean, my goodness, guys, it was driving me nuts. But uh, but yeah, I mean, tried our best back here, just continuously, just trying to run good laps, get into the bottom, be consistent. Um, I mean, that's all we were shooting for. Don't lose too much ground. If they have to check up big or get into a wreck, you know, we want to be right there within striking distance to get up there to the lead and maybe even win this race. That was our whole thought process here um, as we come down to six to go here um, at Charlotte Motor Speedway. And uh, so far up there, so good. I mean, I was really shocked. I, I really thought these guys would be trying some aggressive things after what we saw all early race long when guys were knocking on each other's door going up two wide three wide all all this stuff i mean i i was shocked that these guys were just complacent enough to just you know it's like it's like 15 laps to go and everybody's on each other's door and then we got five to go and everyone's chilling out i mean those guys up there must have had like safety rating penalties or something from those other incidents or maybe they didn't want to get too high up in the uh, incident total. I mean, that would be my only guess. But, uh, but yeah, it's just really a shame, honestly, that the field had to be so spread out. Because I really feel like if I was up there, I could have given those guys a run for my money. I'm not saying I would have won, but I would have loved to have been up there racing with them. I think especially if those guys weren't holding the bottom, I could have maybe picked them off, picked them off one by one kind of. Um, you know, kind of pick my spots here and there because you can see that pink car. He doesn't. He he's he's making it a mission to pass on the outside and like. It might work when you're side by side with a guy when he's not drafting with the guy in front of you. But if he's got a drafting partner in front of him, you're never gonna pull that pass off. I mean, that pink car. All he's doing is burning his right front tire, going up there, turning left so hard to just stay up there. Um. Just not just not very uh, not a very bright idea at all um, as we come here in the three to go three to go left here coming through the trioval here at charlotte still clean up there that pink car still still trying to make that pass on the high side and we are just complacently sitting back here i'm pretty sure the lap car behind us was like 
Just kind of chilling. Yeah, he's just kind of just chilling behind us. It was pretty funny. I would have much rather have had it like the other way so he could have like kind of given us given us some suction in the draft just so we could have uh, sped up. I don't know. I don't. It, it was very odd that he just like sat behind us the whole race. Very frustrating, honestly. But hey, that's racing. You got to play with the cards you're dealt with, and you could see that big gap from me to fifth. I mean, there was no way unless I just wrecked or stopped that fifth was going to pass us. So at this point, we were just sitting here accepting fourth place, um, kind of knowing that there's really no shot unless the guys in front of us somehow get caught up in some kind of trouble, some kind of mess that they create. As the leaders head to the front stretch for the white flag, and we are just getting into turn four here at Charlotte. A big gap, definitely a couple seconds. I think it was like four I think it was four seconds we were back when I was looking at the relative during the race. White flag for us here as we pass the front straightaway. Front, uh, the uh, start-finish line, excuse me. We dive into turn one. Still clean up there with the leader. Still clean. I really couldn't believe it. And, and I think the pink car, too. Like, remember the past couple laps? He had been trying to make passes on the outside. I, I don't. If I remember correctly, I don't even think he went to the high. Okay, so he does go to the high side, but he can't even get there. He can't even get there, guys. And, and and the orange car doesn't even try to move the car in first. And it is a clean finish. We are going to come home fourth. Hey, fourth is better than sixth. That's what we were last time. Still a fun race, honestly. Sucks for the incident points, but heck of a lot of fun here. You never can have fun on iRacing if you're playing it the right way. We'll take a top five any day. Our I rating will definitely go up after that. Um... Yeah, and I was thinking about coming up here and just congratulating the leader, but giving him a little tap. But I, I'm always nervous about the, uh, the the safety rating points. But, uh, yeah, fourth, guys, we will take it. We will be back next time. Hope everyone stays safe during this COVID-19 time. Until next time, guys, so long.